G'day my friends, Marty Ware here from youtube.com slash Marty's Garden and today I'm here to talk about citrus problems, yes citrus diseases etc. Now there are quite a lot of common problems with citrus so I'm going to try and get through this um, fairly quickly here and I found a fact sheet from Gardening Australia. Now I just love Gardening Australia. If you want to go check out this fact sheet yourself you need to go just type into Google uh, Gardening Australia fact sheet citrus care and you can find this uh, exact sheet yourself. Now I'm going to read it all out to you and you know because there's some great material here and it should take a couple of minutes. When it comes to giving citrus tree tender loving care there are a few basic principles and one of the most important is adequate nutrition. Citrus trees are gross feeders that means they need to be fed in July, November and March. Now this is in Australia in other parts of the, your country um, that would be in the opposite times, obviously. With a good citrus fruit tree fertilizer, give them 125 grams every year of the tree's age at each of the applications. Now, the one to use on this is chook manure if you're into the organics. Uh, chook manure with a mixture of the seaweed uh, thrown in. If you can find the combination of that, that is perfect for it. But when the tree gets to about 10 years old or older, it needs one and a quarter cup kilos of fertilizer. Spread the fertilizer around evenly around the drip zone, water in, and the tree will power away. So the drip zone means that anywhere below where the canopy is. Once you get outside the canopy, there's no more roots there, no more feeder roots, so you just need to spread it out evenly underneath the canopy. That goes for any size tree. If the fruits are sour, there's a simple way to sweeten them. Sprinkle about six handfuls of sulfate of potash around the tree and then water in with two tablespoons of Epsom salts mixed into 10 litres of water. I recommend that you do that anyway. Um, you know, it's just a great way to get those extra minerals uh, into the tree and to just bring them more health. Uh, you can see also in this tree here, there's some mottling in the leaf and it's similar to the one that I have in my uh, tree downstairs, which is getting better now, but it had an iron deficiency, and that can be removed through uh, the uptake of more iron. And, okay, let's keep going on. There are a few pests that attack citrus, and one of the most common is the citrus leaf miner. It's not threatening, but will reduce the yield. Look out for silvery trails in the leaf. Now you can see that here, that's the citrus miner through there that's made by the miner and it distorts the leaf. Spraying with white oil preparation will soon control that. So white oil is perfect for it. You can buy white oil and perithum mixed together. Just don't go too heavy on it, just spray it where the area it is because you don't want to hit any of the good insects that are on there, you know, eating the, the beneficial insects, eating the bad ones. So yeah, just, you know, don't go too overboard with your sprays and things. Any black discoloration on the leaf is a black sooty mold it is associated with one or other of the two called sucking insects. These could be mealy bugs, which are small white furry looking insects and that are sticky to touch. It could also be scale or aphids, spraying with white oil or a soft systemic insecticide will usually bowl these off. Yes, but you need to get them when they're moving. Scale are a little bit more tricky than that. They have a wax shell over the top and in winter they'll hide into the corners of the leaves and everything and in the corners of branches to keep warm but once it starts warming up they'll start moving out and moving and walking around and that's the best time to hit them. I'll give you a look at an image here, some scale, now that's really bad scale infestation. Now if you've got it that bad then um, you might even have to chop the tree down or go in with a knife and start scraping them off and hitting them with the white oil at the same time and remove any ants. So if the ants are climbing up the tree you've got to find a stop away like such double sided tape around the bottom or some way to stop them going up and make sure there's no branches touching other branches or touching the ground because ants are clever they'll just find another way up because these guys they work in harmony together um, and protect one to each other the, the scale gives the ants food and in return the ants give the scale protection okay let's go back to our fact sheet here one of the best known pests is fruit fly, which ruins the fruit. To get something that controls this, go to your local nursery and get an organic fruit fly control. You can make them yourself, a little bottle, just hang it off, um, put some uh, sugar or beer and stuff in there, little hole at the top where you can get in, can't get back out, and bang, you've got your own fruit fly trap. Um, the next thing, another pest is citrus gall wasp. 
The insects lay its egg in the branch which swells so the hatching insect can get food. Prune the gall out and get rid of it before September when the adult hatches. Now this is Australian time, yeah? Citrus trees are great in the garden. They look fabulous and provide wonderful fruit. Grow them in pots, courtyards or smallish orchards. And if you follow the simple rules of fertilising, watering and tender loving care, they'll reward you with plenty of beautiful fruit. Yep, that's no doubt about that. Look, uh, it's all about producing the healthy soil, uh, getting all the mineral, correct mineral balance in there as well. Um, if your leaves start going a bit yellow in the winter, it just means that the soil's getting cold and it can't uptake the, uh, the iron, which means it's missing a bit of potassium and stuff as well. So don't panic about that, they will come back as, uh, in the time. But you can rectify that by putting mulch around down the bottom, which keeps the soil warm in the winter and cooler in the summer. So uh, yes, I would recommend that you do that. And fertilise, you know, uh, as, as they said in there. But you know, if you're not real sure about that, like every six weeks, a few handfuls of um, organic life is the one I like to use, which is a mixture of uh, chick, man chick manure and seaweed when I can get and blood and bone when I can get hold of it. If not, I'll just use the straight uh, organic chick manure and just spread it around, and you'll find that you'll get uh, really great growth. And later on, I'll give you a, a video about doing some pruning on the citrus trees and stuff, eh? All right, so I'm Marty Ware. And I'd like to introduce you to a couple of books that I have. Uh, these books, the Guide to Urban Gardening ebook, there's a worm farming book for beginners, and the Essential Guide to Organic Farming. Now I'm selling all them together in one pack for uh, seven dollars. The price is going up on, on every ten sales because it's damn, it's pretty cheap, and it's pretty much all you need to get going if you're an urban gardener or you're in a larger project, uh, maybe out in the suburbs somewhere, or even on a small farm. Uh, great books and great value, and I highly recommend that you uh, jump over and grab those now. I'll leave a link below for you to um, yeah, go and check out the books. Okay, I'm Marty Ware, and happy gardening, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye.